OK, now you've sat patiently through Scott, it's time for the main event. <laughs> no. so, <laughs> so we wanted to bring everything really around to a close. So Dan spoke at the start around targeting something, using Clever Nelly to target a specific KPI in order to derive real demonstrable performance. And a lot of us are using Nelly in a myriad different ways, some for compliance, some already targeting ROI. But really, the, one of our most premium uses of the tool is to take into account ROI, being able to demonstrate not just has my knowledge improved upwards, but so what? My knowledge has improved, so what? What does that mean for the business? If I'm paying for the bill, if I'm signing off this purchase order, I want to know what that 5% improvement in knowledge means to me. Does it mean an 8% improvement in quality? Does it mean a faster time to competency? What is that? So we just wanted to round up today's event with a quick 30-minute whistle-stop tour, you'll be glad to know, about ROI in the realm of Clevenelli. And I'm hoping that based on the conversations you've had today and what you're about to hear, you'll have some food for thought, perhaps for drinks afterwards, perhaps for a meeting next week. But if you are thinking, I'm not incorporating ROI as an element of Clevenelli, this is where we can help you. And so my role, is, as you've probably alluded to, I was working as an account director, have an affinity with numbers, and so moved into the role of content and performance director. And that's really my main focus now, ensuring that the performance is demonstrable and the content that derives that is correct. So in terms of how, how do we line up the two, your ROIs with what sits within Clever Nelly, the, the ethos that we subscribe to as a business is, you might know it as lean, as Scott said, Kaizen. Um, marginal gains is essentially what we're looking at. Each person in your business doing something a little better, and then the roll-up effect of each person doing something a little better, creating ROI. And so that idea of marginal gains is around sustained, continuous improvement. So we're not looking for something that is a flash in the pan. A lot of the times when we start to analyze our employees' performance or start to observe their, their performance, then what we see is, is something called the Hawthorne effect, which is that little peak in performance. So when you know someone's looking over your shoulder, you're being called, cool, listen, you think, actually, I'm going to put my best hat on and I'm going to be the best version of myself for the next two minutes. Little luck myself. Yeah. <laughs> But what we're looking to do is change behaviours within a business over a continued play, over a continued period. Embed that so it becomes BAU. This is normality. And that's where that marginal gains approach comes into play. Because what we're doing is just changing a behaviour, just giving somebody that little bit more knowledge to enable them to do their job better. And by giving them that little bit more knowledge, they're making perhaps, if you're in a call centre environment, for example, maybe that one call a day they're doing better on in an environment of 100 people, that's, that's 100 calls. Over a month, that accumulates, six months, 12 months. We can put a value to that. And that's where what you're doing, obviously you have a vested interest in Nelly, because you're here today. And that's where your vested interest, we can put a value against that to say, knowledge is improved by 30%, excellent. So what, what does that mean? That means that we have saved, with Clever Nelly, this much cash based on these figures. Have the data to prove that. And Nelly becomes something which is much more embedded. You're here because you know that Nelly works, essentially. Or indeed, you're intrigued to find out whether Clever Nelly works. Um, this will give you more traction as you move onwards. Much more traction because people know that by investing in Nelly, it's not a cost center. Nelly is indeed a profit center because you're saving cash. You're not costing the business anything. You're making this downstream wins up front. So a few of us within the herd uh, like a bit of sport. And so this is essentially where that marginal gains came from. So, so David Brailsford, the ex-performance director of British Cycling, brought that in during the Rio Olympics. And he went to that granular level to look at what can we do at the easiest level, that easy element to improve. And he went to the extent of bringing in a neurological surgeon to show his cyclists how to wash their hands properly so that they don't contract any viruses how to, he uh, shipped all of their bedding from their home to the Olympic Village so that everybody would be getting tremendous sleep. And those small, seemingly insignificant changes soon accumulate into something larger. 
And that's really what we look to do. Look at this bigger picture. You've got something up here that you want to improve, you want to achieve, we'll break that down into those composite parts, work with you, looking at your data to see where that's coming from, and say, aha, let's start here and build the ground upwards. And that's where you'll see those gains coming to place. Just context, the cycling team in Rio, every member came back with an Olympic medal, and that is often attributed to that performance and those kind of marginal gains. On the sport theme, I like a percentage, being our favorite numbers. And so I thought, I'd really like to demonstrate how just a very small percentage change in something can elucidate what you can gain by incorporating this ROI element. So I took a tennis player and looked at their percentage points one. And that percentage, probably we're all working with percentages in one way or another, whether it's QA, whether it's FCR, whether it's average, there's a percentage. And so this tennis player, as you can see, in 2004 to 2005, they were winning 49% of their points each match, and where they were, just outside the top 100 in the world. Nothing sensational, really. By focusing on marginal gains and looking, how can I just improve that one small element, just the number of points won each match? 3% points difference. It's not much, right? Any improvement we're all looking to do, certainly in elephants don't forget, when we're working with you on a KPI, we'll be looking for more than 3%. I guarantee you that. However, by moving that metric, 3%, what we see is that the match is won, it's now over three quarters. And this chap has moved up to the third of the world. Add another 3% onto that 52%, we're now at 55%. Again, it's, it's a marginal gain. And the difference that has now been made is that this is Novak Djokovic, and he's the best player the world has ever seen, arguably. Through small increments, those marginal gains, 3% to 52%, 3% to 55%. This is all something that we can work with you in order to implement using the tool. The process, so how we, how we go around it, as you can probably um, assume, we're very data-driven. And so one of the big elements of that sits here. And so the model, four steps, discovery, data, drivers, demonstrate. I love alliteration sticks in your head, we're all about not forgetting. And so in our model, the first stage is really working with you and some of these conversations I've already heard around the room. What, what's the problem? What's keeping you up at night? Where, where is it? I've heard some people saying, ah, it's, it's complaints that's the issue. What is that? So that's the first part. Let's understand what the problem is and let's think about that business case for sign off. What will get the most traction? Perhaps it's an area where there's a lot of focus. Next, data. We are a data-led business. What Clever Nelly does is accumulate data, and then we can use that data to drive performance and to do something essentially phenomenal and change-inducing with that performance. And so what we, we are looking for when we incorporate an RI focus is to scrutinize your data and to say, OK, we've chosen average handling time. There's a focus on that now. How are we going to affect that? Your data will take us. And, guide us to the right elements to say, okay, average handling time looks like the problem, but when we start to break it down, we can see these three types of calls are having an inordinate effect on your overall call time. Therefore, let's keep that as one of our drivers, the next phase, and we'll focus on that. We will understand what is driving that element. So we've gone from AHT up here, and we're starting to move into a much more granular period where we're understanding what drives that overall KPI. Using that performance data will then author some questions for you. There's been a lot of talk around questions I've heard today. And in the first instance, we will author questions on your behalf, take that data, and using that, we'll focus in on whichever training material that you have that links in to that specific area to say, okay, these are the three elements of average handling time that we're going to focus on. What training do you have? that drives that. Perhaps we go even deeper to understand with your SMEs, with the people in your business, okay, is this specific complaint that we're going to target, anything within that that we're seeing most frequently? And then getting that insight will help us put together a really powerful question set that will start to focus on that specific KPI and move the metric. And the final phase, that demonstrate phase, is around aligning Clevernelli data with your internal data 
So taking constant cuts on a monthly basis to understand what Clever Nelly is influencing. Are we moving the dial by asking these questions? Or are we simply disproving and we're not asking the right questions in the right way? Perhaps the, the training hasn't been delivered or landed as effectively as other training methods. Perhaps we need to review the way that the questions are being received. But there'll be this constant interplay between Nelly and your data. And by overlaying one with the other, we'll start to gain a really clear picture for that KPI and start to pivot where necessary to ensure that where we are focusing our questions is indeed the right area. And by going through that continuous process of taking your data, understanding what the drivers are, and then authoring questions around that, putting them to your people, analyzing that data, that continuous cycle will help to move that KPI and start to move that dial. And it's a continual process. As long as we're focused in on the right area, we've got good quality data, we're able to demonstrate that movement, and then we're demonstrating the ROI essentially on your behalf to say, look, aren't you great? All your people know more, and this is what you're saving based upon that data. In terms of what we can focus upon, I've mentioned AHT off the top of my head um, because we have a, a case study on the next slide that I'll reference, but I'm sure based on what's on the screen, there's something that resonates with you, whether that be around customer service, first call resolution, handle time, whether it's around speed to competency like Matt spoke about, errors, quality, productivity, revenue for your salespeople. Are we driving the correct behaviors in your salespeople to help them complete those sales and help maximize your revenue? We can help with that. So where you perhaps aren't incorporating this focus, just think about what might be relevant for you. And if you think that this is something that you really would like to focus upon, then we, as a partner in this, are there for you. So this isn't something where we're going, off you pop. We are in, in cahoots essentially with you. We don't provide you with a piece of software and stand back. We provide you with a piece of software and then partner with you on it to ensure that what you are deriving fulfills and exceeds your expectations and continues on that path. And that's why you're here today. That's why we, we're great with the speakers that we've had. And that's why brands stay with us because we're always looking to innovate and to move forwards with that. And so the case study I just referenced were from those uh, Money Barn who aren't unfortunately here with us today, but you saw the award earlier. And you can see, based on this use case, 38% reduction in average hold time, 4.5% reduction in average handling time, and based solely on those numbers, a 300% return on investment. It's startling when you start to look at those figures, what can be derived, as well as employees feeling perhaps a little bit more supported, more confident, more competent. And so this is just one in a, a series of case studies, more and more that you'll see coming throughout the year. For lots of us who are in the room, you're already on that journey. And so the model that I just went through is that our kind of ideal, you're starting afresh, perhaps you're Nottingham-based. And that's the model we'll follow to take you through. For those of us who perhaps are a little bit more mature in our journey, maybe you're six months in, maybe you're two years in, and you're thinking, we, we can't start from day dot. We need to think about how we incorporate this and how we deliver this into our BAU. Then I just wanted to finish on that point to let you know that there's never a point that you can't start to focus on those KPIs anytime you rejuvenate your question set any time you add in another element, another string to your bow, as far as Nelly is concerned, it's going to be a positive in terms of employee experience because they are seeing new questions, they're being challenged in different ways, and in terms of what you are delivering back to your team and your superiors. And so essentially, I think that the main part of this for us to think about is that current status part. Because if Nelly is already live in your business, we need to do a little bit of analysis to understand what we need to do to set off our ROI focused questions on the right foot. So think about the engagement and the focus in the business. How does the engagement look? Are you at KPMG with 93% or are you a little further down? How's the focus looking in the business? Are people, do people have an eye on Nelly or not? Are there positive behaviors around Nelly? Are your stakeholders invested in the success of Nelly or do they see it as knowledge retention? It's perhaps something that is nice to have, but maybe they wouldn't argue for it. If you're in any of those positions and thinking, 
I can't say that our current use of Nelly is clear, I've got clear buy-in, and the engagement is super, then we just have a little bit of work to do, essentially. Scott spoke a little bit about points-based scoring. There are elements of the system that can be used to help reinvigorate, to help relaunch Nelly, and to help get her back on track. But before we start looking at that last phase around implement, we need to make sure that the foundations are really solid. We don't want our KPI delivery on a rocky base. So those are the first three things just to think about in that current status and be as objective as possible. And where you do come across a problem and you think, yeah, our engagement isn't quite where it should be. I'd like it a little higher before we launch with this. Speak to your account director. We'll work together in order to make sure we start to put you on that path for implementation. If you can answer all of those and go, actually, our current use of Nelly is really strong, our engagement is good, and the stakeholders are vested in what Nelly is doing, then we can start to think about that middle part, that, that due diligence in the business. So where are we going to focus? One of the, oftentimes, when we're thinking about KPIs, the problem is actually boiling that down to a single KPI. There are so many things that one can do with Nelly. How do you choose what you're going to do with Nelly? And we'll work with you on that point to say, OK, what, what data is available? Let's choose the best quality data that is possible that's linked to this KPI that has some kind of substance in the business. And we'll then focus upon that initially. Perhaps after three months, six months, we'll start to pivot and deviate. But this is a good starting point. Complaints, we know that each complaint costs us 500 pounds. You've got those on an operator by operator basis. Therefore, that feels like a sage place to start. We can boil that down and then work from that. Once we've gained buy-in, once we have demonstrated after, let's say, six months that the complaints have reduced on a person-by-person -person basis, we can put some ROI numbers against that. It's very clear that we can then start to delve out and spider outwards. And finally, just that simple implementation phase, simple as that. Once we know where to go, then we'll start to do all of those things that you did initially when you first launched. We'll gather your training material, understand what content your SMEs have, what little snippets that your team leaders and such have about what they're seeing all the time. I always get complaints on this. It's taking up a lot of my time. Ah, excellent. Let's incorporate that into this question set. And then once we've got that content, again, we can do the authoring for you, or you can come to one of our question writing workshops and virtually every month and more and more workshops in person. And then we go into that final cycle of demonstrate constantly looking at that data, overlaying Nelly to say, great, we've implemented now. Let's see what the data is telling us and whether the story that is being painted is ideal or what we are going to do with that. And essentially, it's as simple as that to incorporate an RRI focus into your deployment of Nelly if you are already up and running. If you are fresh into Nelly or such, then we can essentially go from the previous model. But if you are up and running, what you've done is put a lot of legwork in. You've got Nelly in through the building. People are answering their questions. The infrastructure is there. So now it's time to make the most of it, essentially. You're here to make Nelly a success, as are we. Your success, quite candidly, reflects well upon us. And so we're vested in that. We don't just want you to take this software and then off you pop. Instead, we want to work with you on the software consistently. And so if you've thought about any of those points, then feel free to speak to your account director, speak to myself afterwards or indeed we can book some meeting, meetings in afterwards but this is I would say one of the most useful elements that we can add into your Nelly deployment that essentially costs nothing so please do feel free and that's my lot any questions or queries initially that I can answer off the cuff um what I, I'm I... I'm pretty sure there are probably going to be people in this room who are thinking, not sure we have the data to measure this. What would you say to that? I, so essentially, when it comes to those data points or such, any kind of queries that you might have to think, oh, we're just not quite there. I just can't quite can't quantify it. I maybe don't have a number for that. We can inform you of that. We're living and breathing this every day now. And so even if you're a little uncertain, then ask us, reach out. We can always assist. If perhaps we don't have the right thing, we'll let you know and tell you what to ask for. If you can't find that, perhaps we'll pivot and find somewhere else. But we're happy to work with you to validate and find the correct data in order to put together that coherent business plan.